When we got the introduction for the 15 year anniversary, it had Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji matching up against the Admirals. Now, I was hyped because usually the One Piece intro spoiled the potential matchups, but this time we got clip paid. The point we are at in this story, the Monster Trio strength is constantly ascending, and we're about to reach the end of One Piece very soon. The final war is almost among us, and we're going to have to fight these Admirals at some point in the story. So, in this video, I'll be talking about which admirals I think the monster trio will go against because I don't think the matchups we saw in the intro are set in stone. If you guys enjoy regular anime content then make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out a new video. With that out of the way, my name is Potential Unleashed and let's talk about the monster trio and admiral matchups. Now, I think the matchups that these characters will have, there are a few factors in play where it could determine who the matchups actually are. Um, some of those include like characters like Fujitora and how his relationship is with Akainu, his sense of justice, and the fact that he likes Luffy. When it comes to Fujitora, I think out of all the admirals, he has the best sense of justice and the fact that he wanted to get the Warlord, have that system abolished, which he did in episode 967. And Fujitora, he clashed against Doflamingo because he noticed that something wasn't right that was going on there that previously with Crocodile that he had seen um, that the Warlord could not necessarily be trusted. Then there's Luffy and the fact that I believe when they first met after Luffy helped him when they were cheating he was like yo old guy you're strong do i know you from somewhere who are you and fujitora was like i think it's best for the both of us that i don't answer that question later luffy told him that he liked him and fujitora looked and he laughed that was such a wholesome moment and then fujitora he let luffy get in away saying that he wished that he didn't blind himself so he could see what luffy actually looks like and then when it comes to akainu we see that when he bowed to king riku about the navy and marines apologizing because of what they did in Dress Rosa and letting Doflamingo take over. And Akainu, he got mad saying that, oh, the Navy shouldn't have to do that. And he said he can't come back to uh, Marine Four headquarters until he has Luffy's head. And there's other characters like, I believe, Aokiji. He's a mystery. We know that he went against Akainu that they fought for seven days for the role of Fleet Admiral. And I would say out of, if we include him, out of all the admirals, I'd say that Aokiji is the second strongest, but we don't necessarily know his role in One Piece. We don't know if he's a part of the Blackbeard Pirates, like some people speculate. We don't know because of his sense of justice that it's not like Akainu's, but it's not like Fujitora's, that he could be a part of Revolutionaries. There was a scene that he has, even though it's kind of ironic because he's ice, but he has a warm heart in the fact that he let Nico Robin escape and that he doesn't necessarily act out of malice or act in his own beliefs like Akainu does in his own sense of justice, which I like. And so one thing that I want to know is if in the final war they get a new fleet admiral, would it be him or Fujitora? Then there's also Yamato and what if she joins the crew? Currently, we know that Yamato is a Conqueror's user. She uses advanced Conquerors and she has a mythical devil fruit. She also displayed that she can compete and I didn't say beat because a lot of people in my comments section be like, oh, well, she's not as strong. No, I know that, but she was able to hold her own and compete against Kaido for a little bit. If I had to place her with other characters in the story, I put her um, somewhere around Kid, Zoro, Law, and Sabo, all of them um, have displayed a lot in the manga, so I put her right along with them. Um, and obviously, we know how this works. Whenever you are a part of the main cast and you know they need to get stronger and all of that, typically they get some type of power up in some way. And so her joining the Straw Hats will show that she will get um, much and much stronger. So it all depends if she joins or not, how these matches will shake up. And it also depends on higher opponents. Let's just say that, you know, we know that the Admirals, they call, I believe they're called the Navy's um, strongest fighting force, but there are people ahead of them as well. Um, like Emu, the Celestial Dragons, the Gorosei. So maybe these admirals might not be the same people that we know later in the story. So the opponent that I think that Sanji will go against um, out of the Admirals is Ryo Kuju. We know little about him, uh, but we do know, well, we can speculate that he's probably the weakest. Um, and Sanji, he tends to fight the third strongest of the Admirals. 
I think in terms of ideals, they're a little bit opposites and they also deal with the same stuff. Sanji, he values cooking, he values food, and he also values women while Ryo Kuju, he talked with Fujitora talking about how he didn't eat for, I believe, three years and how the only way he would have eaten it if a pretty woman or a pretty girl would have fed him. So it's not necessarily saying that he hates women or he disrespects them, but it just showcased that they both deal with food and they both deal with women. At the same time, uh, his food was praised by Fujitora Rugo Kujo, um, that talked about how, hey, your food's pretty good, so it might be a battle of chefs. And also his epithet, Black Leg Sanji, if you guys didn't know, that is the disease that it affects, I believe, cattle, it affects sheep, and it affects bulls. And you know that uh, Rio Kujo, his name is, um, his alternate name, I guess, is Green Bull. So it could be Black Leg Sanji dishing out some damage or hitting, you know, attacking Green Bull, if that makes sense. And lastly, when it comes to color schemes, Akainu represents red, um, Aokiji orange, Fujitora purple, and Kizaru yellow. The fact that we have not met a green apple yet and that we have the parallels of Sanji hating or going against green characters like Yanji and Zoro. So the fact that that we never will ever get to see Zoro and Sanji fight all out. So this might be the next best thing in showing a character with green hair. The next person I have is Zoro and his matchup would be against Kazaru. I believe Kazaru to be the second strongest and Zoro always fights the second strongest. And a lot of people are going to talk about how Kazaru, uh, he matches up with Sanji because his kicks are at the speed of light, etc. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but Kazaru has had interactions with other first commanders. He had them with Marco and then Beckman at Marineford. And on Sabayoti, he had them with Rayleigh and Zoro. Now, I want to mention that Kazaru, he has been displayed to use a sword. One canonically and the other one non-canon. One was against Rayleigh at Sabayoti and the other one was against Z on film Z, which is is not canon but i do want to make mention of that so kazaru just because that i want to make mention because zoro he fights a lot of people who aren't necessarily swordsmen i mean he fights a lot of swordsmen too but those people include king um pika and kaku with an asterisk and i guess daz bones um daz bones it was just his devil fruits that made stuff like blaze and sharp um and kaku different times with his devil fruit he would use that to his advantage um uh, like it would allow him to uh, do like more tempest kicks and he attacked with his nose as well then there's pika using stones to his advantage when zoro was able to cut through stones and king he used his dove fruit and his uh lunarian powers in his um not i guess pteranodon pterodactyl like zone dove fruit in order to attack and he also used magma so not necessarily you don't have to be a swordsman to fight zoro so when people say that oh well because i was not a swordsman i throw that out the window and this is all like speculation if Fujitora is still part of the Marines and I think that's Zoro's matchup but I don't think he will at the end of the story so that's why I don't have him but Zoro and Luffy they have a lot of parallels and if Luffy when he well let me not say if when he ends up fighting Blackbeard he will be fighting a man of darkness and I think Zoro since they parallel that he has to fight a man of light and also at Sabayoti Zoro even though if they're fully healthy they're still getting no diff by Kazaru but Zoro he was very weakened from nothing happened and he was you know hindering the straw hats being a target because he was so weak and Kazaru went after him so I think Zoro has to get his get back. Luffy's matchup is going to be against Akainu. I think this is a no-brainer. Luffy fights the strongest. Akainu is the strongest of the Admirals with the highest offensive double fruit. And also, there has to be revenge for Ace. Now, you know, I did a video talking about who's most to blame for Ace's death. I think it goes like 60-40, 70-30. Ace is most to blame. But Luffy did. You know, he ended up stopped going for the Viver card. And so Akainu made Ace into a donut. And so Luffy has to get his revenge for that. Or Saba, one of the two. But that all depends if Luffy fights a higher opponent. Um, he still has PT, PTSD from Marine Fort and how um, Akainu, he still lives in Luffy's head rent-free. So I think he has to get him for that. And like I said, him and Zoro parallel. Zoro, like I I said earlier that he held the crew back on against Kazaru and in the rescue against Ace Luffy he kind of held them back and because of him Ace died so as a result they both have to go against the person that they held somebody back with if that makes sense and so when Kazaru he scarred Luffy Luffy was unconscious so I think Luffy has to be able to go against Akainu and showcase that he's stronger than him.
But these are the matchups that I have for our monster trio. Like I said, it all depends on a few factors depending on who's all the admirals at the time and what characters join the crew or who's strong opponents that pop up randomly. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out on a new video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. It's on the screen and in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to unleash your potential.